Hi guys, thanks for joining me. This is uh, the first of our festive make it with videos and we're going to be making Rudy the reindeer and as many of you know the make it with sort of series of tutorials is a new project that you can make with old templates. So everything you see here is made from existing template sets. And I'm going to run through which ones are which templates and how we sort of go about assembling the project. We've got two sizes. This is the small one and this is the large one. And let's break them down. So for the for Rudy's sort of face, it's our Halloween Day of the Dead skull template and it's turned upside down like so. His antlers, this particular version is the large leaf from the Dainty Daisy set and his nose is the poppy petal template. Our small one is obviously the small skull upside down and these antlers, this particular leaf is in both the poppy and the daisy, the dainty daisy set. So if you had um, the poppy set for example and the skull set, you could do either of these projects uh, but you would have this type of antler. If you've got the daisy set and the skull set, uh, you know, you can do either. The eyes are created from the circles that come with the skull templates as well. So this one is made from the medium and the small, and this one is made from the small, and then you kind of have to freehand smaller again. So that's kind of the the template sets that you can use to make this one. So either the Dainty Daisy or the Poppy and then the Skulls. The colours that we've used, warm brown for the main skull or the main face, dark brown for the antlers, cranberry for the nose, and then we've got a little bit of white and a little bit of black. So those are the colours that, that we recommend for this. Obviously, you can use whatever colours you like. This isn't going to be a full blown, you know, I'm going to show you how to make every single part because there are tutorials on the channel that already cover how to make the skull, how to make um, the, um, the leaves and that kind of thing. So I'm going to do a quick sort of recap um, for this project and then just do a, a, an assembly for you guys. So hopefully it'll be nice and quick and you can start making your Rudy the Reindeer decorations. The first thing I'm going to do is run through your weights and measures for the various parts. So I would be using my pocket scale and trifle pot. All of the weights and measures for the individual templates are on the website under projects, infos and downloads. You'll see a, a weights and measures icon if you click that link. And then every template that we do, the weights and measures are there for you um, as a quick reference guide. So this template here is the thin leaf from the daisy set or the leaf from the uh, poppy set. And this will be using 0.4 grams of wool. This template, which makes this antler over here, that's from the Dainty Daisy set and that will be using 0.5 grams of wool. You've got a couple of options for how you do this particular guy. If you want to do a slightly more 3D kind of nose and have it sort of stand off, then you can make a nose and attach it so it's sort of coming at you a little bit more. And for that, I used 0.4 grams. 
or you can do this which is sort of once you've created the skull shape you can put that on and sort of color inside and that will just be you know you pull off pinches finally the skull shapes the small shape would take two grams and the medium shape takes four grams and then to do the eyes again it's just pulling off pinches and colouring in. So that's all the weights and measures for all of the individual templates for this project. Um, when you make your various template shapes, what you do is concentrate on the edges. So put it in around the edges, watch the skull tutorial for this guy, Watch the poppy tutorial or the dainty daisy, um, I think might be for this one, but it's definitely on the poppy. Obviously, we're not wiring anything, so it's just going to be straight fluff in the template. Mainly with the templates, start from the outside, start from the edges and work towards the middle, making sure it all sort of overlaps and joins up in the middle. And, you know, keep moving it so that it doesn't stick to your surface. You're going to need your felting surface. You're going to need your felting needles and you're going to need your fluff. That's really about it for this project. So I've got my parts already made in true Blue Peter style. So we'll jump straight in with the assembly. Here are my parts and I've got the medium skull, which is four grams. I've got a couple of the, I decided to go for um, the large daisy leaf for my antlers and the first thing you decide is whether or not you want your antlers on the front like this or whether you want them on the back like that I think the other ones that I did or I have here are on the back so I'm going to do these this one on the front once you've made your shape you want to felt it really quite firmly you can iron it but I wouldn't recommend that you iron it wafer thin because the thickness of the wall will um, will kind of help it stand up a bit you can of course follow the tutorial on the dainty daisy and put a wire in it if you really do want it to be more rigid that's entirely up to you these have been very lightly ironed I have just glided the iron over the surface and then all I'm going to do now is just trim off the really unruly little frizzy bits all the way around and I'm going to do that on uh, both my antlers and my skull so I've gone around and trimmed all of my parts and I'm going to put my um, antlers on the, on the front rather than the back. I think previously um, I had him upside down so do bear in mind that we're not doing it up this way. You need to have your base up that way. So I'm going to decide whereabouts I'm going to have my antlers and also which way round you want your antlers. Um, I kind of like it with, yeah, let's get this more in the middle. I kind of like it more with the sort of frillier bits underneath and obviously where you put your antlers will determine uh, what kind of expression he has I suppose so I'm gonna go for that I think I think that looks quite good so just to begin with I'm just going to put a couple of tacking stabs in place just to hold it. 
How's that looking? That looks okay. What do you guys think? Yeah, happy with that. So let me get my camera down here. Nice and close for you guys. And all I'm going to do is start stabbing around on the area that overlaps this base. And I'm not using a particularly heavy needle. This is my 40 spiral. But I am really getting in around those edges. Right, so there, yeah, that's really quite attached now. But it's also going to be attached to my surface, so I'm just going to tickle it up. And when you're taking things off the mat, you know, tickle them up, don't grab and pull. I generally find that tickling them, they come away a lot easier. And then we're going to go, just double check, make sure it's still in the same place. And I'm going to go all over this one. One quick thing to remember is that if your antlers are on the back of your base layer, then you want to be still driving through to attach from the front. Don't drive through from the back, otherwise you'll push all the fluff out the front of your project. So again, good driving. I mean, we're not, you know, driving it right in, but we are driving right through. I'm working on my foam surface and then I have my flat mat um, which I have found is absolutely amazing for template felting because it, it's a very dense surface so it does stop your needle from really driving all the way through but it doesn't break it. So there we go, there's our, our antlers attached. So the next thing I'm going to do is pop on the eyes. So I'm going to grab my circles and from the skull set this one is the medium and this one is the small and we're going to use them to make the eyeballs probably about here I think so I'll put one there and one there and you can bring in your nose template as well which can help you place your eyeballs so yeah I'm liking that white first and this isn't you know filling up a template to make a shape this is coloring in on the surface so just pull off a little pinch and go around the edges. And if you notice, I'm jumping about. I'm not just going round and round and round. And the reason that I'm doing that is if I go round and round and round, do you see how it's pulling the wool? It's chasing my needle. So I want to get it tacked down in a few places around the edges first. So I'm lifting my needle out and working round. And then once it's down, then you can go round and round. Don't worry too much about the middle. It's really these edges that need that nice, sort of good covering, nice sharp line. So take, take it off, you need a little more work there. Pop it back on. And I really am using wisps of fluff for this. You can always add more. And when I'm laying these fibres down, I'm going to do it without the template so you can see, I am just, just piercing the surface. It's not that driving action um, that, that we were doing to, to join these. This really is just laying down. The
fluff on top of this base. You don't want to be, you know, fluffing out the back. <laughs> so there's my circle. for my first eye and I'm not going to worry too much more than that right now I'm just going to get the other eye in put my yep I think that will do another pinch and again with that working around lifting my needle out and then we can really go in now at this point you want to lift it off and just check your distances that's looking okay but if you're not happy oh no <laughs> it's I there you go it's because you haven't really felted it on. You can just pull it off. You know, it just needs to move over a tad touch. And then just very lightly tack it down again. Take it off. Have a look. I like that better. Gives you a little more freedom to place that second eye before you kind of really commit Okay, that's better. This eye is um, decidedly less felted or less felt in it. So I will go now back to eye number one and just add in a bit more. And we're going to be putting black in the middle, so we're not too worried about what the middle's doing, just more what the outer edges are doing. So I need a little bit more around there. And you can absolutely weigh out on a pocket scale the amount of wool that you're putting into one eye and then put it into the other. Um, that is such a benefit of having that tiny little pocket scale these weights and measures means that you can weigh out you know, pretty much exactly to 0, 0.0 something of a gram equal there we go now this one is quite set yeah, it's quite firmly felted I'm just going to go all over very lightly again. There we go. Keep your needle, if you're doing this, keep your needle quite upright. If you start putting your needle on an angle, you'll start moving the wool. The wool will always go the way you point your needle. So the colouring in straight up and down is generally a good idea okay so that's the first part of the eye I'm going to grab some black there's the black and then we're going to use our smaller circle template pop that uh, on there and you can use the outside of the white to line up um, if you want him looking down um, or up or cross-eyed <laughs> I don't know this is entirely your project so you do whatever you want but I'm just going to do him looking straight ahead so a pinch 
Yeah, so you can always add more. And just a few, a couple of little light tacks right dead centre. Working with such small bits of fibre, you know, it just catches on everything. So having that anchor in the middle definitely helps. And I'm doing that jumping about technique just to get the fibres down and then round and round and round she goes and then across the surface eyeball <laughs> And then pop your circle back on and then just go over. And, you know, it's it's that put it on, lay it down real loose, pop it up and just check. Now, if you want to manipulate this circle, as I just mentioned, the wall will go the way you point your needle. So I'm just going to work around ever so lightly. I'm just using the first couple of barbs. In fact, let me get a real close up for you here. I'm, that's it. That's all I'm using is that. Just to bring in these little fibres. And then I'm going to go all over with um, sort of, I call it a compacting technique. It is just using the first five mil of the needle. So you're only using the first barb. But just going all over that surface. And this is a, a, a very straight up and down needle. I don't want to move it around anymore. See, I've flattened his eye a little bit there so I'm just going to tease those fibres back up and then go straight there yep I like that and same again I'm going to pop few jumping around stabs and then round and round the centre this is such a teeny tiny template it's probably difficult to see inside plus I'm felting black <laughs> in a black circle <laughs> but there we go there's his other rhyme you can see it's <laughs> It's a little bit off, but that's okay, because we're going to adjust it ever so slightly. I'm going to use my needle and point it that way to bring this down. I'm going to turn my thing and point my needle that way. And do you see how it's... This is a, a, a good way just to make sort of micro movements. There we go. He's a little quirky. <laughs> it suits me down to the ground. There we go. So, leave it alone. Right, there's the eyeballs done. So what we're going to do now is just finish off with his nose. Depending on how you want to do this, you can do the same technique as the eye, where you colour in um, on your actual sort of base. You can see that that's quite, quite flat. Or 
you can make a nose and pop it on like that. So either or, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to use this nose to show you the, the sort of attaching technique for this. So what we're going to do, I like the dome bit at the top and this kind of pointier bit underneath. So that's the way that I'm going to have my nose here. And if you're just going to colour in on the template, do exactly the same as the eye. Put some fluff, just pinches and get your edges established, then sort of bring the fluff into the middle and colour it all in. Give it a good even covering. If you make a separate nose and want to join it on, then let me get my camera real close. There's the rolled edge. You don't want to drive down like this. What I would do is just catch the edge and with a, an angle, let me move this over, see the side. So I'm just catching that underneath and drive it down. And by catching the underneath, you kind of retain that bulbous, um, sort of nice smooth edge. If you were to just go straight down, which I'll do on this side, do you see how you end up with kind of a flat sort of, there, you can see on this side, you've got that nice sort of rounded and on that, it just kind of goes that way. There's a technical term. <laughs> so I'm going to take my time with this. Just catch that under layer and drive through. In fact, I might even go up a needle to my 38 spiral. Actually, that's a little aggressive. Back to the 40. You'll get a feel for your own needles. The 40 spiral is wonderfully delicate and allows you to make a lot of mistakes <laughs> before you get too committed to it. So, there. So it's kind of all the way round. And there's my puffy Rudy nose. There we go. Okay, so I've been driving through, but as you can see, not a lot's come out the back because I've used uh, sort of more of a that angle rather than that. So I've sort of driven the fibres in towards the centre of the project. I hope that made sense. So, he looks lovely, but he still looks a little flat. So, I think we just need to give him that little sparkle of life in his eye and shine on his nose. I am, of course, talking about sort of reflection and lights. So, it is a pinch of white. It's not even a pinch. It's a few hairs. It's less than a few hairs there. So I'm going to, I don't even think the pocket scale would weigh this one. So I'm going to roll, roll it up in my fingers. Like that. And then get another bit and roll that up. Remember that 
you need a slightly bigger blob of white than what you want to end up with. Then you have to decide which side you want the light source to be. I'm going to put it on that side, so the right. And this does need the fine needle. Little few stabs. And that's really all it needs. Then just make your reflection in the other eye in the same place and about the same size. <laughs> and again, those sort of micro movements. I want it to go up that way. That's a little bit go that way. There we go. So his little lights on his eyes, his little twinkle in his eye. And you want to try and make them not circular. You want to try and make them kind of a little. Um, what's that? It's an arc. <laughs> Clearly I need more coffee, I do apologise. <laughs> the last thing to do is to put that little bit of shine on his nose. And for that, you need a slightly bigger bit. And we're not going to roll it into a ball. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the fibres and I'm going to fold them in half. And I'm going to very, very loosely bring these fibres back in. I'm just going to very loosely roll a little sausage like that. Get these ends in first, and then twist. Let me get close again because I've got the end in. And then twist and twist and this is very very light very 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 light we're not driving through at all and I'm just teasing it with the end of my needle and then I only really want it to be about to there, so I am going to grab my scissors and just trim off that extra little bit and then felt in those fibres. And again, you want that sort of arc. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm th that is far too far in the nose but because we have only felt this very lightly I'm just going to pick at those white fibers and then lightly tease them out and look it's like it never happened <laughs> Can you tell I've done that quite a few times? <laughs> so let's put this right on his tippy tip of his nose. Let's get it right up there. And again, nice and light. This is too long again, so I'm just going to cut it down a tiny little bit more. And there we go. That's much better. Happy now. <laughs> so there, he's got the sparkle in his eye. He's got the shine on his nose. And he's all ready for 
hanging on a tree maybe he makes an excellent card topper as well um yeah you can do the the small one um fits very nicely i think on a four inch card but there you have it a collection of rudy the reindeers various sizes shapes different characters um these are incredibly easy to make as you've just seen so you know great fun to maybe do uh with younger members of your family um you know get them to attach some ribbon you could even make some rudy bunting thank you very much for spending your time with me today i hope you have enjoyed this festive make it with please do subscribe to the channel hit that bell icon and you'll receive notifications when i upload new videos and i wish you all a very crafty day